And again, I post something after ages. I feel like at this rate, you just gotta live with it for now. Now, just to be clear, I haven't quit YouTube, but it's hard to stay consistent these days thanks to other commitments in my life. So I can't promise consistency. Here's what I am going to promise though, quality content. I'll try my best to bring you all content that no other creator is doing at the moment and put all my editing skills to work whenever I do show up. So no more Kam Chalau stuff on this channel anymore. Which is why going forward, if one of my videos does disappoint you on any front, let me know. So what all has happened since we last spoke? Let's see, Lal Singh Chadda came out and disappointed many alike. Brahmastra was a movie. Remakes have overwhelmingly failed. Akshay Kumar released 7 million new movies. Kala was probably film of the year. Natu Natu won an Oscar. Should have said in the movie as well. Fuck the Chalo show. Let's see what else. Oh, and a certain somebody showed up to the party and demolished all the history books. Welcome to Film Mantra, you guys. It's actually been a while. And in all seriousness, the Hindi film industry looked to be in an ugly state up until just a couple of months ago, where nothing was clicking with the audience, no matter how much the fraternity tried. YRF itself had a back-to-back -back string of flops in this bizarre marketing move, where they just forgot to promote any of these giant-ass movies that I believe would have otherwise done at least something to bring the audience back to the theaters after the pandemic. And things seemed inevitably bad for its first film of the new year too. With little to no marketing and ill-timed boycott calls, Pathan was all but guaranteed to fail. But what do I know? Look at these SRK fans. The movie released in the last week of January and well, to be honest, I'm not gonna spend the entire video listing down the records that it broke. Just know that it's huge. Now hold your horses. Am I saying that it was the best movie ever? No. It wasn't even the best movie of the spy universe itself. But crucially, did it get the job done? Yes. And when I say the job done, I mean a bunch of jobs it had to do. This movie had to be so many things at the same time, I'm surprised it didn't end up like the dawn of justice or worse. No, think about it. It had to be a comeback vehicle for Shah Rukh Khan after over four years of absence. It needed to be the biggest action spectacle for Bollywood or at least this franchise alone. It had to be the first movie to acknowledge the shared universe while simultaneously introducing us to new characters, including its main protagonist, Pathan. It had to show us a glimpse of what the future holds for this franchise like any good first installment does. And it had to do all that within the length of a typical Bollywood masala entertainer with songs, romance, and comedy. I am surprised. I'm surprised it didn't end up falling flat on its face. And that, my friends, is a job well done. And frankly, I'm glad Shah Rukh Khan got this one after being bamboozled by everybody for the type of cinema he was experimenting with in the last decade. Critics wrote him off, fans felt disappointed, not enough people showed up to the theaters to watch his films. Heck, even I originally created Film Mantra to make that one video I made towards the beginning of this channel. For some reason, the otherwise super dependable filmmakers like Imtiaz Ali, like Rahul Dholakia, and like Anand El Rai weren't able to do justice to the brand Shah Rukh Khan on the big screen. Something I've been saying for far too long needed to happen for Khan to honestly feel special again. And it's not even completely that. It's the half-baked nature with which they were trying to do that that left everyone perplexed. Take Rais as an example. That first half was dark, gritty, real, and dirty. Definitely something that demanded an equally raw and gut-wrenching second half. But that's when the whole justify the star trope kicked in all of a sudden. And the second half took this weird life of its own, completely alienated from what was originally established in the first half. My point to directors being, either make a film or make an SRK film, but don't hotshot the two of them together. And I believed right from the moment I watched War that Siddharth Anand would be able to do just that. This is what Shah Rukh Khan needed an unapologetically SRK film to be presented in all his glory in a film that although doesn't take itself too seriously, at least stays consistent with itself throughout its runtime. And I'm glad Siddharth Anand didn't take an easy route with Pathan's characterization in this one as well. Trust me guys, the easiest thing in this film would have been to present Khan as a mirror image of Ritik's Kabir or Salman's tiger before him. A can't do any wrong pseudo alpha male protagonist whose every move is a calculated checkmate, every dialogue is a home run, every punch is a call from heaven, and well, you get the point. 
This trope is so easy, it catapulted a 2 hour 48 minutes TikTok video to an all timer status. Seriously guys, KGF2 was a shit show. What's wrong with us? But let's not deviate from Pathan. And that's exactly what I liked about this character. He felt refreshingly new. Our guy here is a softie. He's everything you don't necessarily associate with mass heroes in any Indian film industry today. His actions are not backed up by Abbas Mastan style scheming within scheming. He's never too cool to pass on simping for the girl he likes. He even gets double crossed what two times in the movie and just barely makes it out alive. His body is beat up to a point he literally asks for timeouts during combat. And most importantly, unlike his predecessors, he never feels above the system. I think that's the one character trait we're gonna see a lot from Pathan going forward. Compare Kabir's dismissive suave when talking to Colonel Luthra in this scene with Pathan's humble and empathetic demeanor when talking to his boss in this one. So it's no surprise that by the end of their respective movies, Kabir, very similar to Tiger before him, goes his own separate way away from Raw. Whereas Pathan on the other hand, humbly accepts a leadership role in his own new squad. And that is exactly what makes Pathan a dynamic character in this world of black and white, while also laying the groundwork for future films in the universe, something I am going to be talking about next week, you guys. So quickly, before we end this, where exactly does the movie Pathan rank in my opinion as compared to its predecessors in the spy universe? I think this would be my humble ranking so far. And again, I'm not saying I didn't like Pathan, it's just that Siddharth Anand's own war in 2019 felt more tighter in its screenplay thanks to its lesser stakes. And to be honest, that climax was objectively insane. On the other hand, Ali Abbas Zafar's Tiger Zindahe still firmly remains my favorite film of the franchise for some odd reason. I guess it's the believability with which its narrative unfolds that I like the most. And I know what you're thinking right now. How in the bloody hell is one man fighting off an entire Iraq-based terrorist group believable in any way, shape or form? You're right, it's really not. But compare that to what the franchise has since churned out, and suddenly, Tiger Zindahe seems like a legit documentary. But it's not just that. I think this movie took itself just a little more seriously than War and Pathan, which I absolutely admire, because it's way too easy to not take yourself too seriously in this genre. Add to that, we had already seen its direct predecessor in Ekta Tiger, so there was that pre-established connection with the characters of Tiger and Zoya. So Pathan's ranking here shouldn't be a point of concern. One thing that should be alarming though, are the VFX used. Is it just me, or are we heading backwards in terms of CGI? Bollywood and really the entire Indian film industry has come a long way in terms of VFX. SRK's own Red Chili's VFX has turned out some of the most mind-bending effects in the last decade. How did we go from here to here? And I know YRF VFX is not at all on par with Red Chili's. No one is. But YRF has itself produced better CGI in the past in movies such as Sultan, Dhoom 3, and even the previously mentioned Tiger Zindai. How did they unlearn all that in Pathan? Honestly, poor VFX almost took me out from the best scene in Pathan. And I'm not one to speculate like this, but I genuinely think there's a sense of complacency in the makers today, ever since Bahubali became a thumping success despite those god-awful effects. Why else would someone like an Om Raut give us this cartoon after a respectable attempt in Tanhaji? I think it's because they don't see value in effort towards better VFX. But you know who does? SS Rajamoli. Seriously, RRR's VFX were far superior than those used in Bahubali and look how it paid off. But again, let's not deviate. YRF should either up their game in this department, especially now that they're marketing their newly created VFX studio called VFX. And if they can't, simply get Red Chilies on board for this task. They already did so in fan and the job was done masterfully. All in all guys, I'm excited to see how this franchise moves ahead from here. There are tons of news coming out practically every day regarding the next few films. We're gonna be talking about exactly that in my next video. But until then, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to, I'm not gonna force you. But do like this video, that's more important to me. Let me know what you all thought about Pathan or just say hi in the comment section down below. It has been a while. That said, have a safe week ahead. My name is Amir and I shall see you soon.